Hey, what's up, guys? I'm a music nerd here, and it's time for another beginner's guide video. Today's channel, we're gonna be talking about post punk. Before we get into it, remember to hit the subscribe button down below. Much love to new subscribers that have been coming to the channel. Uh, it's still new, but uh, you know we're we're trying to grow. But yeah, also hit the notification bell to be alerted for new content. The last time I was here, I talked about uh, 1990s East Coast hip hop. Uh, one of my favorite periods of music and now we're venturing into something different post-punk another one of my favorite periods of music so many great bands so many great albums that came out of this era and a lot of those bands highly influence the bands and artists that we know and love today you know would there be a Radiohead without a Joy Division would there be an FKA Twigs or Billie Eilish without Susie and the Banshees probably not for anybody who's looking to get into this era of music. I'm here to um, recommend some essential albums for you. They may not be the best albums, but you know, the defining albums. I'm here to do some goodwill, like a good music nerd should, you know? So before we talk about, you know, the albums, for anybody who's unclear for what post-punk is, kind of give you more about history and the background, the punk rock scene that came in the seventies, which was, you know, bands like the Sex Pistols, the Ramones, Clash. You know, they were kind of rebelling against what mainstream rock was doing at the time. You know, overblown production, guitar solos, stadium shows, and just bringing rock back to its raw energy. You know, three chords. You know, no guitar solos, two-minute songs. But punk rock became overexposed and commercialized pretty fast and a lot of those punk bands either disappeared or evolved into something else that genre became post-punk basically what post-punk is is that it's a genre in which it combines the traditional punk rock aesthetic and energy befusing it with the avant-garde and other genres bands would kind of venture into reggae music or disco music at the time, even jazz. These were the punk bands that kind of said, you know, we don't have to fit into a bubble. We can do anything we want. The first time that we're gonna be talking about is Iggy Pop's The Idiot. Iggy Pop, uh, the rock icon that we all know and love today. But by the mid 70s, Iggy, Falling on hard times, you know, he, you know, broke up with the Stooges, got into uh, a huge drug habit, moved to Berlin, and uh, linked up with David Bowie, who he himself at the time was falling on hard times. So they both moved to Berlin, and, and Bowie produced this record, and what we got is a haunting, menacing, electronically infused record. And I would go on to say that it's probably the first goth rock record. This album inspired many bands such as Joy Division, The Cure, Bauhaus, so many great songs here, Sister Midnight, Night Clubbing, Dumb Dumb Boys, China Girl, which will later be covered by David Bowie and become a mainstream hit in the 1980s. This was different than anything from what Iggy Pop has done before, so I would say if you are a Stooges, you want to check out the Stooges, uh, do not expect Anything from what the Stooges has done on this record, it's a completely different record uh, from what those records were. Um, but just as potent and just as raw, um, easily my favorite Iggy Pop record, definitely check it out. The next album I'm going to be talking about is Joy Division's Unknown Pleasures, the first of their two records that they released. Their lead singer, Ian Curtis, you know, died by suicide when he was just 22, so he only released two records with Joy Division. Joy Division is one of the most well-known post-punk bands. If you want to know what claustrophobia sounds like, it's this record. Not listen to this record if you're in a great peppy mood. Uh, because this record just brings you down. It's just the lyrics are just full of despair. But I think what also 
what's great about this record is that it's also kind of romantic. And a lot of his lyrics, you know, inspired um, sort of the new wave groups, that kind of feeling of like isolation and lost love and, you know, wanting to be loved are all over this record. So yeah, even though personally I prefer their second record closer, this is the definitive Joy Division record. Next album that we're going to be talking about is Sushi and the Banshees, Kaleidoscope. Incredible record. Uh, I think Sushi and the Banshees, uh, they're, them like Joy Division, is you know one of the first post-punk groups to come out of that era. And this is, was their third record. And it kind of saw them venturing out to uh, different styles, different genres. You know, every song in this album is kind of its own flavor. Electronic songs here, there's synth heavy songs here, there's dance songs here, there's slow jams. This is a lot packed into this record. To me, it's a it's a great record. Susan the Banshees, for some reason, has gotten forgotten over time. They should be, you know, just as recognizable as The Cure and The Smiths. Every one of those bands, you know, that came thereafter would tell you that Susie and the Banshees what were the OGs and their willingness to take risks, to take chances on different genres um, inspired those bands to do the same. And so, yeah, definitely check out this record, but also check out the discography. Artists to this day, even The Weeknd, you know, he was highly influenced by Susie and the Banshees. He even covered a record on this off this album, Happy House, on his um, his trilogy record. Yeah, lots of great songs here. Uh, as I mentioned, Happy House, Christine, Red Light. Gang of Four, obviously, like the other post-punk bands, was influenced by the punk scene, uh, the British punk scene, but kind of did it in their own way. They're also influenced by funk music, so a lot of their songs had that nervous, you know, upbeat energy, but with funk rhythm guitars. This album accidentally inspired, you know, the funk rock alternative metal movement that would happen in the 90s. So bands such as Red Hot Chili Peppers, Rage Against the Machine, even ho even hardcore punk bands such as Fugazi, all a huge debt to this band. Also, new metal bands. If you're a new metal fan, I would also advise you to check out this record. But also, what makes this album special is, you know, socio-political messages that are still relevant to this day. One of my favorite songs off this record called I Found That Essence Rare, which talks about the self-serving media and government, you know, dealing with how we put people in power, but they don't act in our best interest. Yeah, definitely a great album. One of the best albums to come out of this post-punk era. Check it out. Talking Heads Remain in Light, arguably their most critically acclaimed record. Talking Heads came out of that CBGB's New York late 70s bubble, you know, that a lot of bands such as Blondie and Television and the Ramones started their careers off of. But Remain in Light is their fourth album, and it kind of sees them in a pivotal point in their careers. Their last record, Fear of Music, found them dabbling in, you know, even though I hate the term, world music. But it did show some influences from, you know, Afrobeat music. But this album is them saying, no, we are officially a post-punk band. We'll do anything. We can do anything we want. So this band has a lot of influences from Afrobeat, 70s funk, early hip-hop and rap, and just blending it into the Talking Heads mold. Yeah, there are some amazing tracks here. Definitely their jammiest album. But Remain Light's also their jammiest album, uh, their grooviest album, Once in a Lifetime. Of course, if you're a Talking Heads fan, you know, even if you're not a Talking Heads fan, it's probably their most famous song. I mean, you hear it everywhere. But other great songs here, such as Born Under Punches, Cross-Eyed and Painless, 
Houses in Motion. Also, this album was pivotal in inspiring, you know, other rock artists to venture out, you know, African music influences. So guys such as Paul Simon and Peter Gabriel, even Vampire Weekend with their first couple of albums. Huge influential record, one of the best albums to come from this era. Really shows, you know, Talking Heads just firing on all levels here. Devo's debut album, Question Are We Not Men? Answer, We Are Devo. Uh, another influential post-punk band. It set the trends of what you know 80s rock music was gonna sound like. This is one of the first pop albums to feature a lot of synths, which would become a staple in 80s music and 80s new wave music especially. Even though this album came out in 78, this is one of the first 80s records if you kind of you know, put it that way. Lots of great songs here. Uncontrollable Urge, their cover of I Can't Get No Satisfaction, The Rolling Stones, Jocko Homo, Mongoloid. Devo would become more successful in the next decade, but this is the album that started it all. And also, I just learned this uh, when I was doing research for this record, but David Bowie co produced this record with Brian Eno. Great post punk album. Check it out. Next album is Television's Marquee Moon. This album, honestly, one of my, if not my favorite punk rock album. Not one skippable track on this album. Very short, to the point. And in a way, Television is kind of the spiritual successor to Vela Underground. I mean, they're obviously a New York band, but they also, you know, use poetic lyrics and used a lot of New York imagery. Great songs here, See No Evil. Uh, the title track, which is the longest song in the album, but it's never boring. It inspired tons of rock bands. R.E.M., Sonic Youth, uh, U2, even though those bands would become much bigger than television. But this album started many genres in the 80s. Hardcore punk, jangle rock, new wave, indie rock, grunge. This album did it all. U2's Boy, also their debut album. Uh, we all know who U2 is. I think this is a very underrated record. Obviously, they made a lot more albums that are that people know, like Joshua Tree and Octung Baby and The Unforgettable Fire. But this album doesn't get talked about as often. I think it's one of their best records. You know, they were a part of that post-punk scene at the time. You know, so choosing the Banshees and The Cure. Uh, were a huge influence to them because uh, the sound of this record is so different from what they would do. But this album, it's a very simple record. You know, lyrics deal a lot about adolescence, identity, even uh, a song that talks about homosexuality. Yeah, I don't know why this album doesn't get talked about. I would say this album, you know, give it a chance uh, because it's much different than the stuff that they would do uh, later on in their careers. Yeah, some of my favorite songs here. I Will Follow, Electric Company, Shadows and Tall Trees. Next album, one of the most famous rock albums of all time, The Clash, London Cullen. I mean, if you are a fan of rock music, there's not a lot to say about this, this album that hasn't already been said. But for those who are, aren't too familiar with The Clash or punk rock in general, London Column is probably the defining rock post-punk album of this era. You know, The Clash started out as a traditional punk rock group. This album kind of saw them venturing out into post-punk. Different genres are displaced throughout this album. You know, so The Clash flashing their artistic side. It's a double album. Uh, I think it's like just over 70 minutes, but they cross over a lot of the musical styles. They venture out into ska music, New Orleans R&B, lounge music, reggae. So many great songs. They're obviously, the title track, amazing record, uh, brand new Cadillac, Train in Vain, 
another famous record of theirs. For a double album to accomplish that feat, to have 20 or so songs and just none of them being terrible, that's hard to accomplish. Definitely, if you're looking to get into post-punk, check out this album. So that's it, a Beginner's Guide to Post-Punk. Obviously, post-punk covers so many decades, but I kind of wanted to you know, just talk about the late 70s, early 80s, uh, post-punk era. So yeah, definitely check out some of these records. If you have heard of these records and love these records, you know, leave a comment below what you think. Like I said, please subscribe to the channel. Let's keep this thing growing. If you like the video, please feel free to share. But anyways, till next time.